So we figured out how to take one graph and convert it to something else by what we just did in the last example here, where I give you. Uh, so I, of course, it's frozen. I give you a starting point, and I say get to the end point. You just have to describe the transformations. Now what we're going to do is you're going to have the graph, okay, like this. I give you the original. And I say, do all this stuff to it and sketch it. All right? So first thing, when you get in a question like this, and you will get a question like this, is figure out what A, B, H, and K are and what you need to do. So A, B, H, and K. All right, what's my A value? Two. What does that do? Vertical stretch by two. Vs by two. All right. What is my B? No. What's the B value is what's in the function. So it's one half. What does that do to the function? Horizontal stretch by two. What's my H? Negative five. It's what makes the inside zero, right? So that means we're going left. And K is minus eight, so we went down. Okay. Now we have to do all that stuff to the graph. So what do you do first? A and B. Does it matter which one you do first? No. So we'll just go in alphabetical order and just do A first. Okay? All right. A is 2. Vertical stretch by 2. So I multiply all Y values by 2. Now I'm not going to do all the Y values. I'm just going to do one of them, or two of them actually. This one right here, which is at 1, and multiply by 2, it goes to 2. The 0 stays the same, so basically it does that to the graph. It stretches it, pulls it up. Then what do we do? Horizontal stretch by 2. So you multiply the new y value or the new x values by 2. So this point here is at 1. I multiply by 2, it goes to 2. This one is at negative 1. So now the graph looks like. Which makes sense. We stretch it this way, and then we stretch it this way, and now what do we need to do? Yeah, and we can just do those together. When you're doing a parabola, parabolas are kind of hard. Like all the points are going to be all over the place. It's not the easiest thing to, to sketch. But the one point that it is easy to sketch is the vertex. So if I ever give you a parabola, get the vertex right. Okay. So basically, that hasn't moved. So now we just have to move the vertex five units left and eight units down. So five left, eight down, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to worry about the other points. There's your final graph. That's all I really care about if it's a parabola. Get the vertex right. <clears throat> Okay. Any questions about that? We're good? Okay. Well, let's try something else. Flip the page, please. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this one. All right. Here's our graph. I don't even know what graph this is. Some sort of piecewise function, which if you go on to take calculus, you'll learn what those are. Um, okay, there's our graph, there's our function. Figure out A, B, H, and K. A, B, H, K. All right, what's our A value? 
Negative two, that does two things. What does it do? Vertical stretch by two. What does the negative do? Flip over the X. All right, what's my B value? One, yeah. Which doesn't do anything, so we don't even really need to do it. I just did it for completeness. What's H? H is three. So we go right, and K is, so we go, all right. I'm going to let you sketch the graph this time, and we'll see if we meet at the end. The note you will end up off the graph because the geniuses that designed this didn't give you a graph big enough to fit it in. It's going to look super confusing because they didn't give you, they should have made it, you move it like five right or something so it would not overlap. We ready? No. No? <laughs> I know, there's a lot of lines going on and there's overlapping and let's zoom in. How's that? The pinky salmon colored thing is the final one. So basically, let's go this step by step. First thing you do is multiply by negative two, right? So that's where this at negative two becomes positive four. The x intercepts stay the same. Positive four becomes negative eight. Uh, positive five becomes negative 10, which is off the graph. That's what I mean by they didn't give you a graph that's big enough. So the paint is the reflection and the stretch by negative two. Okay? And then you go, what is it? Five. What do you do? What are we doing? Three right and one up. So this point moves one, two, three, up one. This point, one, two, three, up one. One, two, where did I go here? One, two, three, up one. It should be there, actually. That's where that point should be, right there. There we go. One, two, three, up one. There we go. Something like that. Basically, if you're close on this one, I'm happy. I should change that question and just make it so you move it left or right, like eight units, so there's no overlap. Oh, I just can rewrite it. All right. Let's do one more graph on the next page that doesn't overlap as much. This one. Uh, 
Okay. This graph has a trick to it, or this function has a trick to it. Here is what we're doing to this graph. What is wrong with the way that is written? This is our whatever general equation. What is wrong? How does this differ from that? K is inside. K is inside. Uh, uh, I wouldn't put that bracket there. Pretend that bracket's not there. Because I would never write it that way. Yes, that's the one who ever said that. B. This is the big thing. B is separated by brackets here. It is not here. So you need to make this look like that. You are right. I never noticed the K. Nobody ever said that to me before. So I'm going to write it here. A, F, B. B needs to be separate from X and H. Okay? So we did this yesterday. I need to factor out that one half. So I pull the one half out. What am I left with inside the brackets? What happens when you factor a fraction out or a number less than one, I guess? The three turns to six because you're dividing by a half, which means you flip and multiply by two. So I get x plus six minus eight. You can always check to see if it's right. If you dump the one half back in, you should get this back, right? So I put one half in here, I get one half x. One half times six is three. So we know we did it right. Okay, now you can figure out a, b, h, and k. Oops. A, b, h. Okay, what is my a value? One doesn't do anything. B is half, which does what? HS by two. What is my H? Negative six. If you just looked at the original, you would say H is negative three. If you looked at it quickly. The other way you could do it, and I'm hesitant to show you this, but you could say what makes the inside of this zero, all right? So you could go, if you don't want to write this down, don't write this down, I could go, that has to equal zero. If I move the three over and then multiply that two up, negative six, okay? So you don't have to factor the one half out, but most people, if you, if you just look at it like this, a lot of people just go, my h value is negative three and it's not, it's negative six. Okay, so I don't really care how you do it. Just know that you have to make that B separate if you want to know what the H is. Uh, what's my K? Negative 8. So we've gone negative 6, H is left, and negative 8 is down. Do you want to sketch this one on your own? This one doesn't overlap with the other one. Sure. It does go off the grid, though, so one point goes off the grid. I know, I didn't make the book. Just... Do your best, people. And I'll do it, and we'll see if we get there together.
Ready? Okay. One more minute. Is that it? I did it in Galaxy at the end there. The pink one is the horizontal stretch. And then everything goes, whatever, six left, eight down. This is the point that ends up off the graph, but that is the graph. Yes? All right. One last thing for today. And then a few questions. All right, we've done the graphs. Now let's do the words. So go back one page to page 140, please. Okay. We have to figure out the equation, A, B, H, and K. Now we have all the words, all the letters. We've done it with just A's and B's, and we've done it with just H and K's. Now we'll put it all together. All right. Uh, so we do a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter. Is that A, B, H, or K? That's a B value. If we factor of a quarter means that's what we multiply by, so our B value is 4. Uh, we do a vertical translation of 5 units down, so that is K. Positive or negative 5? All right. If I don't say anything about H or A, we just leave them. And so the equation will be F of 4X minus 5. Is that okay? All right, last one for today. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3 fifths. What is that? That's an A value of 3 fifths. Reflection in the Y axis. That's a B value of negative 1, right? Because you're going across the Y axis. And horizontal translations, two units left. So H is negative 2. We're going to plug it into this thing. So we get y is equal to, or a is 3 fifths, f of b is negative 1. You can just put negative or negative 1, it doesn't matter. Um, and what do I write in here? It's x minus h, so that turns into x plus 2. And there's no k value because it didn't say anything. There you go. That's it. Any questions? All right, smart people. Uh, here are your questions to do. One, two, three, four. Don't do E on four because they flip the order, even though I told you don't flip the order, and they do it, so that's kind of weird. And then six and eight, please. And that is it for today. It is a lot. But I have faith that you can do them.